Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we have so much to discuss because Taylor Swift is back on tour, and she has given us so much to break down because the Eras Tour is still the Eras Tour, but there's a lot of changes that have been made to the original Eras Tour set list, just the show in general. So on this episode today, we are going to be breaking down night one Paris Eras Tour, all the changes she's made, all the additions that she's brought in. We're going to talk about it all because as I mentioned earlier this week, I felt like there was going to be some pretty big changes, some cuts that were going to be made, some just tweaking of the show, and she delivered. I don't know if anybody else was on social media yesterday while Night One was happening, but every Swifty that I follow, every person that I saw on social media was losing their minds because there was just so much, so much to break down. So we're going to cover every single part of it. As I said, from costume changes, song additions, songs that were cut, surprise songs, all the things. Okay, so let's just go in chronological order because like I said, a lot to cover. I took notes. <laughs> I was watching live streams. I was following on social media and I took a lot of notes about what went down. So let's start from the very beginning, which was as if you've been to the Ayers tour, if you've seen the Ayers movie, you know that she has a little intro song that she plays as like the dancers are coming out on, onto stage and it incorporates all the different, like different lines and stuff from her various albums to kind of include all the eras. Well, as expected, she added in the Tortured Poets department to that kind of intro song. In fact, she added the line, what if I told you I'm back from the alchemy? And then she also added in straight from the Torture Poets Department from the song, the Torture Poets Department. There may have been some other additions that I didn't catch. So if you did catch them, let me know in the comments. Um, but just hearing like the new additions kind of gave me goosebumps. I was like, ooh, this is so exciting. Um, and then she jumps right into Lover. So the start of the of the show was the same as the previous, the previous version of the tour, I suppose. But, and I don't know if I said this on here or if I just thought it in my mind, but I had a feeling prior to her going back on tour, because I was thinking to myself, what songs, she, she's gonna have to cut some songs from the, the original set list because she's not gonna be able to add a full new era and then also play all the songs that she was already playing. She's gonna have to make some cuts to make some room. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I feel like there's a good chance she'll cut The Archer because it's one of the only songs in the set list where she's really just performing it by herself. If you've seen the Eras tour, again, you you know this, she just is kind of like walking on the stage while singing The, the Archer. So it would be an easy song to cut from the set list because of that. And lo and behold, what did she do? She cut the Archer. So apologies to anybody who is a big Archer fan and you haven't gotten to see the tour yet. Um, I don't believe you'll be hearing the Archer performed live, but we have to remind ourselves she had to make cuts to get new songs. So it's just how it's gonna be. Also, by the way, she was wearing a brand new um, lover bodysuit and then a brand new jacket for the man, kind of like, a, like an orangey pink. It was beautiful, stunning, loved it so much. But then after she performs the lover era, typically in, um, in, other, in, the, in the past, she would go from lover into evermore, or no, sorry, she goes lover, fearless, and then evermore. She goes lover, fearless, into red and everybody is like what is she doing oh my god she's changing this whole set list she's moving things around wow this is kind of crazy um she also was wearing a new dress for fearless too it had some it was like a darker a darker dress i actually really really loved it um so she goes into red she is wearing a this is not taylor's version shirt which everybody loved and thought was so funny um so as i said lover fearless into red, which is quite the stretch. I don't believe there were any cuts that she made to the red era, which makes sense because again, that era was already pretty short and she basically just played the hits for us. So that makes sense. Okay, then after red, she goes into speak now. Now, 
This is when one of the most devastating cuts had to happen, which was that she cut long live. She cut long live. Now, I am one of the lucky few, I feel, because I saw Taylor Swift in Kansas City night two, same show as, as uh, one Mr. Travis Kelsey, and I got to hear her perform long live because Kansas City was the first, the first city in the US where she performed it. So I feel very fortunate that I got to hear it live because it's one of my absolute favorite songs. I love it. It makes me emotional to hear it live. I'm obsessed. But she's officially cut it. It's no longer in the set list, which I know for a lot of people is a massive, massive loss. But the reality is, again, she didn't start out the tour playing it. She added it in for a period of time and she has to make room for the other songs. And if you're somebody who's maybe seeing Taylor on tour for the first time this summer or in the fall, remind yourself that even though you're getting certain songs cut from your set list, you are also getting songs that other people didn't get to hear live. So it's a give and take. But again, as a long live stand, I was pretty sad to see her cut long live because that's just one of the best songs. But she does Enchanted. Then she goes into Reputation. Nothing has changed from Reputation. And then she goes into Folklore Evermore Combined, which honestly... I'm kind of surprised she didn't do from the start. I always felt like, and I don't know if other people feel this way if they've seen the, the tour in person specifically. I love Folklore. It's one of my favorite albums that she's ever put out. And I like Evermore, but I always felt like those moments in the tour, it like dropped the energy down pretty significantly, which was needed in some ways, but it also, it was... I didn't always feel like it fit. And I and I wondered, even when I saw her perform live, like she should combine these eras, put them together and kind of make it its own thing. It just, cause it just goes well together. Well, she did it for this new updated version of the Eras Tour. And this is what she said on stage. I've always talked about Folklore and Evermore as sister albums. On the Eras Tour, we have reunited the sisters, combined them into one chapter. You can call it Folkmore or Everlore. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you promise to sing Champagne Problems really loud. So I love that she combined it. I think it's smart and makes sense. Here are the songs that she kept from Folklore and Evermore, and then we'll get into the ones that she cut. So she performed Cardigan, Betty, Champagne Problems, August, Illicit Affairs, My Tears Ricochet, Marjorie, and Willow. Makes sense, all great songs. Here are the ones that she unfortunately cut. Tolerate It, which is kind of surprising because Tolerate It was like a big number on the tour. The Last Great American Dynasty, Tis the Damn Season, and The One. Now, again, I'm not shocked by some of these because The One is a song she like performs on top of the cabin. Tis the Damn Season, she had cut before to make room for, like, I think when she had the Heim sisters on tour, she cut Tis the, Tis the Damn Season to perform um, No Body, No Crime. The Last Great American Dynasty, I'm, I'm not shocked by any of these cuts, though I know there are people out there who are upset that they didn't get to hear certain, certain songs on this tour. But I feel like she kept a good majority. And it, again, it just makes sense that she combined the two eras um, because they just go well together naturally. And a lot of the songs sonically sound very similar. So it just makes sense. Okay, then we go from folklore or whatever we want to call it into 19, 1989. Again, not changed. The set list d didn't change. She did wear a cute like pink top blue skirt kind of like mismatched thing, which I thought was a very fun change up. And then from 1989, she goes into the tortured poets department. Now, I am obsessed with the visuals, the costuming in, with this new era. It looks so good. Again, I'm watching it through like a grainy Instagram video, but it looks amazing. The choreography looks so great. I, I cannot wait to like watch a bunch of videos about it because I just think it looks so fantastic. So this is the Tortured Poets Department set list. I'll read it out and then we'll kind of dive into um, different parts of it. So, but daddy, but, but daddy, I love him. So high school, who's afraid of little old me, down bad, Fortnite, the smallest man who ever lived, and I can do it with a broken heart. So she did a lot more than I thought she would do. I know some of these like So High School is really just like one of the choruses that she performs. It's not the full song. 
but she performed more than I thought, and she performed songs I didn't think she would perform. Um, I'm kind of surprised she did Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, and I'm kind of surprised she did The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. I, I feel it's a little... I wonder why she didn't do My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, because I feel like people love that song, and I feel like that could have been fun on, fun on tour, but love the set list. Again, starting out with But Daddy, I Love Him, iconic. She changes the outro of that song and includes the chorus of So High School. You guys, this is the biggest sign ever that that song, well, I guess the final sort of part of But Daddy, I Love Him into So High School, it's all Travis Kelsey. It's full on Travis Kelsey. Not only were the lights red and yellow, like, sorry, that's like the biggest sign ever, but the dancers during So High School were swag surfing, okay? Which we all know is what Taylor Swift was doing and other people were doing at Chiefs games. That song became like the Chiefs anthem. I mean, I was, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, she's, they are all swag surfing. This is iconic. Love that. And I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about how like Travis Kelsey literally went from seeing Taylor on tour, the same show I was at, wanting to give her a friendship bracelet to having a song written about him as, as a part of the Eras tour in less than one year. Like, that's pretty incredible. Um, I was obsessed with the transition between the smallest man who ever lived into I can do do it with a broken heart because she's basically acting like she doesn't want to perform and like her dancers are having to like hoist her up and like take off her costume. Like she's pretending, she's playing into the storyline of like, I don't want to perform, but I have to because I can do it with a broken heart, uh, which was so fun. I just, the costuming, as I said, was amazing. That white dress that she was wearing was so beautiful. I I loved it. I'm obsessed. I'm seeing this tour in, in um, Indianapolis in just, you know, six months or something. And <clears throat> I cannot wait to see this live because I think it's also going to make me love the album so much more like obsessed. I would love to know what you guys thought of the new era um, of, of her song choices. Were there songs you wish she would have performed instead? Like, let me know all the things. Um, we then get into the surprise songs and did I nail it or did I nail it? Because I said... <laughs> yesterday she's going to perform paris and she's going to do a song from the torture poets department and what did she perform paris and loml loss of my life well you know whatever it's called um so i feel pretty proud of myself for that i have no more predictions for the rest of the weekend because honestly she could perform literally anything and we'll find out but um i was proud of myself for getting those two right and then she goes into midnights and closes the show the way that she's always closed the show with karma and bejeweled and all those great songs so overall absolutely incredible show it looked incredible from social media as i said i cannot wait to see what else she does this weekend what other surprise songs she adds if we get any surprise guests travis kelsey was not in attendance um for the first show, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see him by the end of the weekend, if he comes in for the last couple shows. Um, genuinely just can't wait. So happy that Taylor's back on tour. Please let me know in, in the comments all of your thoughts about the show and the song she cut and everything. I wanna hear every single thought. As always, if you love Taylor Swift, subscribe to the channel because we're gonna be covering this tour, I mean, every single part of it for the rest of the summer. Don't wanna miss a single thing. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.